So iPadOS 15.6 Beta 1 has been out for a couple days now. We put it on the M1 iPad Pro to test out. And there are a few things, especially in the code, that I think is gonna foreshadow what we're gonna see with the different beta iterations moving forward, but then ultimately what iPadOS 16 is gonna give us, at least from an accessibility standpoint. So stay tuned. Oh, and there's also one really important fact that is a big positive compared to the 15.5 betas that was kind of you know a detriment to the experience, but let's talk about it. So let's get right into all these changes, everybody. The first thing I'm gonna show you is the actual size of the update. So if we go into the camera, I did take a screenshot or into the photos. iPadOS 15.6 developer beta is about 5.23 gigabytes. So that's pretty big in my opinion. So give yourself at least 10 gigabytes of actual storage space to be able to actually get this installed correctly and functioning as smoothly as you can. The next thing we're gonna talk about is the actual build number. So if we go into the settings, go into the about section, click on 15.6, you see that we're on 19G5027 lowercase e. I do believe this is gonna be a quick beta program. We're probably gonna get two, three, maybe four betas. So like a beta two, a beta three, and then an RC. Because again, WWDC is right around the corner. It's on June 6th, which is less than two weeks away now at this point. Shout out to my boy, Mike Caputo, for getting that uh, invite to Apple Park. Wish I could have gone, but one day we'll get there. But overall, this is what you're looking at in terms of the build number. It was very easy to install. Just again, make sure you have at least 10 gigs of space to get this installed correctly. So now in terms of what's new, there really wasn't anything tangible that you can think of, right? So, or actually see, but if I go over here and I click on the actual release notes, you can see that there's only one thing that Apple showed us, which was in Xcode, there's a known issue where 13.4 is unable to prepare iOS 15.6 beta devices for development. The workaround is to drop down to Xcode 13.3.1 which is something that not a lot of people are gonna deal with. Like that's not something that's relevant to me at all, but it is there and that is the only known issue and the only thing that Apple's making us aware of when it comes to 15.6. But one thing that I do wanna mention is that there's gonna be probably a lot of features coming with beta two, beta three, and then finally iPadOS 16. So if I go back into Safari and go into Apple's newsroom, Apple seems to be preparing to show previews of some innovative accessibility features. So accessibility is gonna to be top of mind for Apple because again, they want people to be using iPhones, iPads as much as possible, no matter what your situation is, which I love to see. And that's where the word accessibility comes from. You wanna make sure that these products are as accessible as possible. Say that five times fast, as accessible as possible. But again, so one of the cool things that I'm seeing is it might not come to the iPad because there's no real Apple Watch support for the iPad, which I really wish would change. I would love to manage all my Apple Watch stuff directly from the iPad, but it looks like with the iPhone at least, you're gonna be able to mirror the Apple Watch onto the iPhone. So you no longer need to do everything from the Apple Watch app and you no longer need to kind of edit your stuff on the Apple Watch itself. You're gonna be able to mirror whatever's on your Apple Watch right into your iPhone, which could lead, which could lead to a lot of like inception stuff. So imagine if you're using the camera and then you got the camera playing, as you can see, like this is my viewfinder for the camera, but imagine that playing on here and then just an inception kind of situation happening. Another really cool accessibility feature that Apple's gonna be touting and probably showing off with beta two and beta three is this new door detection for users who are blind or have very low vision. So imagine being in a situation where you pull an iPhone out of your pocket or pull an iPad mini out of your pocket, and then it, it's gonna allow you to use the camera, again, as your eyes to be able to see like, hey, there's a door right in your way, there's a doorknob right in your way, just don't run into it, open the door with your hand, like it's gonna let you again. It's door detection so you don't run into the doors or you can actually know when there's a door right in front of you when you're getting to a certain destination. So I love that Apple's making things as accessible as possible and they're using these things that are in our pockets as tools to get you all around the world. And then another huge one is actually live captions coming to iPhones and iPads, but natively. So again, there's a lot of applications already that offer closed captioning, like every single streaming service offers like Netflix, you know, YouTube, Apple TV, you can get subtitles in pretty much anything that you're watching. But when you have live captions native inside of Apple, inside of the iOS and iPadOS ecosystem, that means every action that you take can have a caption for it, right? So if you can't hear anything and you need to read whatever's going on, there will be live captions for every instance that you go through with your iPad. So that's an amazing thing to have. And the fact that it's gonna be native to the actual operating system and not reliant on you know, a third party application to give you closed captions, that's so, so nice. But that is pretty much it when it comes to all the new updates. The last thing that did happen is actually Maryland is a second state now to be added into the digital driver's license. So now if you live in Maryland, Arizona was the first domino that fell and now Maryland is right there, which is great because that's right next to DC and DC is where all the lawmakers are getting all this stuff done. So the moment ID has become digital and you can put them on your Apple Watch, your iPhone, your iPad, you know, wallets are gonna be obsolete. Like right now, the only thing that I carry in my wallet is an emergency credit card 
in my ID and that's all that I carry in my wallet. So that's one thing to keep in mind. I'm sure Apple's gonna slowly and slowly roll out as long as they keep everybody happy on a state-by-state -state level. So digital driver's license, you know, coming to a phone near you. And the last thing we're gonna talk about is just overall performance. Performance has been great so far. I have heard that some people have been struggling with 15.6 a little bit, everything's been a little bit slower. For me, everything's been working fine. And one thing which is awesome is actually Universal Control does not break with 15.6. So if you guys remember with 15.5, if you got into the beta program with 15.5 and you were on Mac OS 12.3, Universal Control did not work at all. But now, even though I'm on the beta program with the iPad and not the beta program with my Mac, Universal Control still works and it still works perfectly. And the last thing we're gonna talk about is actually battery life. So let's go over the last 10 days and see what we've been working with here. So average screen on time is about an hour, but let's go on a day right here like Thursday, four and a half hours of screen on time, took about 75% battery. So you can see on a day like this, we can actually probably extend it to that seven hours of battery life while using some intensive tasks like LumaFusion, YouTube, FaceTime. But you can see LumaFusion, hour and a half, took up 40%. YouTube, 23%, took up almost two hours. FaceTime, 17%, only 20 minutes. So FaceTime does take up a lot of energy from your iPad, even though it is an Apple native application. But on a day like Wednesday, we had two and a half hours of screen on time, about 50% battery. Probably could have gotten to that five hour mark, but again, we are still nowhere near 10 hours of battery life, especially if you leave the Apple's native ecosystem. But that's pretty much gonna do it for an update with 15.6 beta one. Stay subscribed, let's finish up this video and get out of this view. So that's pretty much gonna do it for this video, everybody. Like you saw, there weren't like any tangible differences with 15.6 beta one. It was a lot of security updates, bug fixes, kind of making sure that everything is ready to go for the big reveal of 16.0 which we're very, very close to getting. I believe June 6th is WWDC, and that's normally when we get the announcement of iOS and iPadOS 16. One thing that there has been rumors and leaks about is that maybe Apple won't give the beta program immediately to everybody, which would kind of be annoying. I really hope they stay true to what they've been doing in the past, which is giving us the beta software pretty much on release day of WWDC. But, you know, definitely stay subscribed to the channel to find out, because the moment 16.0 comes out, you guys know we're gonna be all over it. But again, outside of all those little code hints that we saw on Twitter and that I was able to find from other places about accessibility and the driver's license in Maryland now being able to be digitized, there weren't too many tangible differences. So for the most part, I recommend holding off. I mean, there's no real reason to upgrade to this, but one awesome thing about this update is that it doesn't break universal control. So I am not on the beta program with my MacBook Air, but I am on the beta program with my iPad Pro and universal control is still working perfectly, which I'm very, very happy about. But that's gonna do it for this video. If you guys did make it to the end, leave a little dolphin right here, just so I know that you did make it to the end, and leave a comment down below if you did upgrade or update to the new beta program, because I'm always curious to know how many people are involved in these beta programs, whether it be the developer or the public beta, because you know I'm curious to know how many people are willing to risk it to test some of these things out. But if you're thinking about getting into the beta program, probably this one is one to like hold off on because there wasn't anything new. But that's gonna do it for this video. If you guys wanna check out some more iPad stuff, click on one of these videos right here. But until then, I'm out of here.